back. So I've given you 30 degrees special angle. We've talked about 60 degrees special angle, 45 degrees special angle. The last one we're going to treat here is 90 degrees. Okay? Now, please take note. Sine 90 is 1. Cos 90 is 0. While tan 90, you will never find questions on tan 90. I'll tell you why. Because tan 90 gives you, this is not 8. This is infinity. If you plot a graph of tan 90, it never touches the axis. So it's infinity. It just goes down. We don't know where it ends or where it touches. So tan 90 is infinity. So these are the four special angles that I'll treat in this class. The last thing there is trigonometric identities. Now the identities are very simple. You know, you have to put them in your head. You just have to memorize them and then we'll be fine. So we'll see how to apply some of these things I'm teaching you now. So let's go. If we have sine A plus B, this would give me sine A cos B plus sine B cos A. Can you see this? So in the same vein, if we have sine A minus B, it will be sine A cos B minus sine B cos A. It's an identity. Now, cos A plus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Now, I have searched through the jam pass question and I didn't find um, any identity question on this. But then, let's just have it. Let me just give you. Cos A minus B is cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Time will fail me to um, prove these laws, okay, or these identities. I can just prove only one for you, then you have an understanding. Now, the next we're going is tan. Tan A plus B is tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B, okay? While tan A minus B is tan A minus tan B over 1 plus tan A tan B. Let me just put one for you. Look at this. Now, let's take 60. You know, 60 is 30 plus 30, right? Okay, so if we have, let me just put it here, okay? Sine, let's say this is the A, this is the B, okay? Sine 30 plus 30. Now, what is sine 60 from what we had? I just erased that. Sine 60 is root 3 over 2, if you remember. It's a special angle. So let's prove that. Let's see. Sine A is 30 cos A plus sine B. Sine B is 30, right? Cos A is cos 30. Now, what is sine 30? Half dot cos 30 is root 3 over 2. Plus sine 30 is half dot root 3 over 2. You see this? So if we multiply this, we have root 3 over 4 plus root 3 over 4. And since we have the same denominator, we just take one of them and add the, the numerator. So this is root 3 plus root 3 over 4. How many root 3s do we have there? Two root 3s. So that's 2 root 3 over 4. 2 can go in 4 2 times, leaving us with what? Root 3 over 2. Is it the same thing as what we have here? So you can see that. So this is valid. You can check the other ones to see if they are also valid. So that's um, all for our trigonometric identities. Um, okay, let me give you one more. One more trig identity, but uh, it scarcely com comes out in, um, um, what's it called? Um, 
jump question. So we have sine squared a plus cos squared a equals to 1. Now, it can be anything. It can be sine squared theta or cos squared theta, but you must always get 1. So note that. Then another one, which is uh, one elementary one, is this. Tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. Please take note of that. Okay, that's like um, a sixth one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight one. Okay? So these are trigonometric identities. Now, let's see questions that would require the usage of these, um, these bullet points or these um, subtopics on the trigonometry. Now, look at this. 2016, number 31. I am sure you have written this somewhere. Please, you can pause the video at any point and even rewind. Get this down somewhere because we're going to have to need these things. Okay, let's go. That's a question. I only have three questions here because of time. I'll solve only three questions. The first one, if sine theta is 12 over 13, find the value of 1 plus cos theta. Now, when you see a question like this, what you do is simple. First, draw, because when you see sine theta, it's talking about socatois. I remember that socatois applies only to right angle triangle. So draw a triangle, put the angle, and then fix the values. So if this is the theta, sine, remember the so is sine opposite over hypotenuse. What this means is that opposite is what? 12. Then the hypotenuse is what? 13. So you can tell what the adjacent will be. Remember your Pythagorean triple. If you remember, this would be 5. Can you remember that? Or if you like to say 13 squared is 12 squared, if this is x, you still get a 5. Get 5. Plus x squared. This is 169 equals to 144 plus x squared. Right? So x squared is 169 minus 144, which will give us 25. So x is the square root of 25, which is what? 5. So this is 5. So the question says we should find the value of 1 plus cos theta. So what is cos theta? From Socatois, car, adjacent over hypotenuse. So what's the adjacent? 5, hypotenuse is 13. So the question says we should find 1 plus cos theta. So 1 plus cos theta would be 1 plus 5 over 13. Now, if you see 1 here, you can make this a fraction. This is 13 over 13, because 13 over 13 is 1. To make your work easy, 5 over 13. So since you have the same numbers as denominator, you just add the numerator. What do you have? 18 over, 18 over 13, which is option D. I believe you're enjoying yourself. OK, so two more questions, and then we're done with the trick. 2017 question C, six rather. It says evaluate sine 45. What does this tell you? This is just special angle. Go back to your special angles. Evaluate sine 45 plus sine 30 in short form. Sine 45 plus sine 30 in short form. So you will have to go back to the special angles that you wrote down. So sine 45 degrees plus sine 30 degrees in short form. So sine 45 degrees is root 2 over 2, if you remember, plus sine 30 is 1 over 2, which is half. So what does it give you? This is root 2 plus 1 over 2. Option D looks like it. Now 1 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 1. So we can write this as 1 plus root 2 over 2, which is option D. Now, please look out for questions you can solve in, within seconds. It will help you when you're solving jam questions. That way, you'll be able to save enough time. Don't spend too much time or too much of your time on questions that will give you problems. Because if at the end of the day you don't find an answer in the option, you'll be demoralized. So look for very, like this one is very short. Very quickly, we solve this one in record time. So questions like this, there are lots of questions like this every year. Questions you can solve in less than 30 seconds. So look out for those questions. They will help you build your confidence. Now the last one here on the trick, 
It says simplify, simplify. Can you remember this? This is under our identities. Tan 80 degrees minus tan 20 degrees over 1 plus tan 80 degrees tan 20 degrees. Now, press pause. Try to remember what identity is this. It is tan A minus B. A minus B. So our A here is 80 and our B is 20. So tan 80 minus 20 is what? 60. If you remember our trigonometry of special angles, this is root 3. So option C. Can you see this? In less than 30 seconds, we're done. So if you have your trig identity in your head, this becomes so cheap for you. So we'll go to the next. We're almost um, at the end of everything. So this is differentiation. After differentiation, we have integration, and then permutation and combination, and then you can go to bed. All right, so differentiation. Now, um, I'm going to do something here. I'll spend a little time teaching you something here. I'll show you a few things. Under this, we're just going to do, I'll teach you how to differentiate explicit functions, and then we'll just deal with differentiation of some trig functions. It's just elementary. That's what the syllabus says, elementary differentiation. So it's not something to worry your head about. Now, look at this. If y is a function of x, OK? So the y dx simply means we differentiate the function with respect to x. That's what it means. dy dx means differentiate the function with respect to x. So how do we differentiate a function with respect to x? Look up. If y is x raised to the power n, the y dx is simply n x raised to the power n minus 1. Let me give you an example. If y is x raised to the power 5, if you follow this formula, the y dx would be 5x raised to the power 5 minus 1, which is what? 5x raised to the power 4. Very simple. This is the law. If you follow this law, this is the formula. This is all you need in differentiation. Are we OK? Quite easy. Now, that is that. So now let me teach you something. Let me give you some, uh, we call them, if you like to say, standard differentials. Standard differentials. Standard differentials. Or, OK, let me just go to position of trig functions. If y is sine x, the y dx is cos x. So you just put this on your head. OK? If y is cos x, the y dx is minus sine x. If y is tan x, the y dx is sec squared x. Oh, sec. Which one is sec? Now, take note. One of a sine is called, let's say one of a sine x, is cosec x. Now, look at this. I want to, I want to tell you something. One of a cos x is sec x. A lot of students make a mistake here. So look at this sine. They think one of a sine should be sec. No, it is not sec. It is cosec. They think one of our cos should be, I mean, there is a cos here now. It should be cosec. No, it is sec. Then one over tan x is cotan x or cotangent x. So look at this. These are standard differentials or differential or uh, differentiation of trig functions. It's just elementary. Jam does not require you do more than this. So we go straight to solving questions. Um, quickly for want of time. So let's have the first question. Now, if you're told to differentiate um, a function, if the function is a polynomial, you differentiate each term differently. Please, look at that question. The first one says, if y is 4x squared, sorry, 4x cubed, if y is 4x cubed, minus 2x squared plus x 
we should find the y dx. What it means is that we should differentiate y with respect to x. So what we're going to do is the y dx is from the law I taught you. I said if y is x to the super n, the y dx is what? n x to the super n minus 1. So this would be 3 times 4, which is 12x raised to the power 3 minus 1. You see this? Minus 2 times 2, which is 4x raised to the power 2 minus 1, plus 1x raised to the power 1 minus 1. So look up. This is 12x squared minus 4x plus 1. Why? Because 1 minus 1 is 0, and in, in your indices, Anything that is raised to the power of 0 gives you 1. So this would give us 1. So this is your answer. 12x squared minus 4x plus 1. The correct answer is option B. As you can see on the board, option B. The next, we're solving the next question from 2014. Question number 39. It says, if y equals to cos 3x. Now, this is differentiation of a trig function. Now, if y equals to cos 3x. Find the y dx. Now look up. Look up. Now how do we solve a question like this? Very, very simple. Now, what I taught you earlier, if the question was if y equals to cos x, find the y dx. Of course you know that I taught you earlier. So the y dx will be minus sine x, right? But there is a function. So y is a function of another function. So we call that function of function in differentiation. So how do we solve that question? Very simple. Now let's u be this function, 3x. If u is 3x, how do we differentiate u with respect to x? We get 3 from what I taught you here. This is more like 3 times x to the power 1 minus 1, right? So we get 3. Now if y if u is 3x, it means y would be what? Cos u. So if we want to differentiate y with respect to u, we have the y du. This would give us minus sine u from what I taught you. Go back to what I gave you. Now, what do you observe? We want to find the y dx. So the y dx will be found by this simple multiplication. The y du times the u dx. Now, um, ordinarily, looking at this, if we were to cancel this, we would get the y dx. I hope you understand that. But we have values for this too. What is the y du? We just did that here. Minus sine u. Times, what is the u dx? 3. If you bring them together, you have minus 3 sine u. But there was no u given you, or given us in the question. So we have to remember that we allowed, we did this. Remember this line, let u be 3x. So we replace that. We have minus 3 sine 3x. That is the answer. The y dx is minus 3 sine 3x. Do we have that there? Yes. Option B is the correct answer. Option B. Now, I'm, 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 I'm glad you can see how simple differentiation is. Okay. Now, this one, I'll leave you to solve this one. I quickly solve 2019 number 36 for you. Very, very easy and fast. Um, I'll solve the question for you. Look up. Now, how do we solve a question like this? Now, many people get to this question. They are, they're like, how do I solve a question like this? X to the power 7 minus X to the power 5 over X to the power 4. What do I do there? Now, it's very simple. There are two ways of solving that question, which um, I'll teach you something. I just put something on the board. There's what we call product rule and quotient rule, okay? But I just put the rules on the board, explain them in just one minute. But this one is very simple. x raised to the power 7 minus x raised to the power 5 over x raised to the power 4. Now, mathematically, mathematically, this is x raised to the power 7 over x raised to the power 4 minus x raised to the power 5 over x raised to the power 4. Now, can you see this? If we did the LCM here, we'll go back here. So we're on course. Now, indices made us understand that if we have something like this, 
this would be x to the power 7 minus 4. Minus x to the power 5 minus 4. You see this? So what do we have? We have x raised to the power 7 minus 4. This is x raised to the power 3. 5 minus 4 is 1. So we have this. So what is common to both? If we factorize this, x is common to both. So we're left with x squared minus 1. Um, let's see if we have that there. OK, fine. We have that there. So the correct answer is um, option A. x, x squared minus 1. Don't forget to try this. And let me give you a clue to this. I won't solve it. I'll just give you a clue that you solve. Now, that is y equals x squared minus y equals x squared minus 1 over x. Now, look at this. This is y equals to x squared minus, from indices, 1 over x is x to the power negative 1. OK? So x to the power negative 1. So with this one, you can solve the question using the same things or the same method we used. Integration, and then the last is um, permutation and combination. Now let's look at integration. OK, before then, I said I was going to give you product and, and quotient rules. So it's fine. Let me just give you the rules. Now, if you have y, OK, as a function of two functions that are multiplied by each other. Let's say you have a function x squared plus 1 and x plus 3. You see this? Now, these are two functions that multiply each other. OK, so they are two different functions of x. So we can say this is u and then this is v. I'll just give you the rule, OK? This is a product. Product in mathematics is multiplication. So this is a product. So to find the y dx, you simply do u, the v dx, plus v, the u dx. What does that mean? Just take u, differentiate v with respect to x, plus take v, differentiate u with respect to x. You get the answer. Now, the next is quotient rule. If y is a function of two functions that divide, or maybe one is over the other, let's say we have, let's still use the same function, x squared plus 1 over x plus 3. Now, you see, this is a function of x. This is a function of x. So if the numerator is taken as u and the denominator is taken as v, so to solve this question, or rather to find the y dx, or to differentiate this, the formula is simple v du dx minus u the v dx over v squared. Now, you hardly find a question on quotient rule in JAM because, like I said, you know, JAM people are nice. They don't want you to fail. So they won't give you any question that will take so much of your time. Okay. So we're going to take a pause at this point. When we come back, we'll treat integration, and then we have permutation and combination. See you shortly.